hi guys welcome back to my channel if you're new and this is the first time you're seeing me hi good night is your girl shell um and for those of you that's not new to this shit show welcome back um tonight as you can see from the title i just wanted to like hop on here and share a quick story time because I was moved, okay? Some shit done happened and I was moved to talk about this. I don't know, girl. You know, it's like we're talking on a professional level and how to deal with the messery and the jokery in the professional world. So yeah, I'm trying not to curse. Um, we'll see how long that lasts. And yeah. All right, so this ugh, child just talking about this is giving me low-key ptsd like thinking about it because i just really hated working at that place like looking back on it it gives me the heebie-jeebies that i literally stayed there for five years and like i hated it it's like i loved it but i hated it so from jump nikki always had an attitude like she just she just came in there she was like the od sourpuss like she always had something you know she always had her face screwed up like something was wrong with her face and i'm just like oh nikki was always that type of person where like everywhere she went she brought like a little gray cloud with her because she always had an attitude and i'm like Girl, is your life that bad? Is your life that bad that every day you come to work, you have an attitude? And you know, she was one of those people that had attitudes. And when people like, when customers snapped back at her and got rude right back with her, she would kind of look to like other associates for sympathy, like, oh my God, like what's wrong with that customer? Like the customer is straight tripping. Like I literally said nothing. And I'm like, bro, it's just your attitude. It's your, it's just your energy, your aura. Like you just come across as a bitch. Or whatever. She didn't last long in the jewelry department because, honey, them old ladies was not having her shit. Okay, the jewelry department I liked because although it was older women and although there was drama, it was, it was less drama than my home department. So I liked it there. And them old ladies just wasn't putting up with her shit. They just wasn't, they weren't having it. They weren't having it. So she ended up going to handbags or whatever. And in handbags, she became um, a specialist for Michael Kors. So she was like a step below a manager dealing with Michael Kors handbags. Like she was specifically zoned for that. Like she was not supposed to pretty much do anything else but Michael Kors. My course was supposed to be <laughs> her life. Like she was supposed to eat, breathe, sleep, shit, Michael Kors. Like that was just her, that was her area. So there was always this weird underlying, mind you, everybody had a problem with her. And, and, and it's not one of those situations where it's like, she's, you know, like everyone else is the demon and she's just so innocent. It's actually quite the opposite. Like she's the demon and everybody else is just falling victim to like her bullshit. So everybody in the apartment already didn't like the hoe. And I'm just like, oh, I've had run-ins with her before. And having to now work with her, you know, under such close circumstances, because I was a Michael Kors handbags associate, it was just kind of like, okay, little bitch. Like, this is not what we doing. I don't got time for it. What really kicked things off? Like, like I said, she, she was weird. We kind of went through this weird phase. A lot of people, not just me, like, it was funny because I'm never that type of person that when somebody dislikes me, the first thing I think is, oh my God, they're jealous of me. Like, I'm not that type of person, but it came to a point where, like, so many people were just like, it has to be that she's jealous of you. Like, that's the only thing that literally makes sense. So a lot of people was like, oh, you know, it just doesn't make sense that she has all these problems with you and you're literally like a saint, like you're the nicest person, like this doesn't make sense. So we kind of went through a weird phase where we would talk and I would give her like makeup tips and stuff because child, she needed them. Um, but you know, I was 
trying to be a friend to her. Like there was, and you know what's crazy? Like there was a time where she really like confided in me and told me stuff. But like looking back on it, like she was type of a shady fake bitch. So I'm not even sure if like the things she was telling me was true because she seemed like the type that kind of like fabricates stories to make herself seem more interesting. Coming to the heart of this video. You know, sometimes you gotta get a backstory to get, you gotta go back to come forward, all right? So, what really made shit jump off was when I decided I, you know, I, I finally grew up, you know, I was tired of being late every day and, you know, just doing immature shit for the company. And I was just like, you know what? I want to progress. Like, I want to be a specialist. And coach handbags was kind of like that, that area where handbags went to die. Like, nobody wanted to be in coach. Like, everyone would stick under Michael Kors. And it would be to the point where there's literally like 10 associates in Michael Kors crammed up in that little ass space. And, <laughs> you know, no no customers are being helped in coach. And if one of us do have to go over to coach, we didn't know anything about coach because <laughs> we stayed in Michael Kors. So I got tired of always having like low key anxiety, having to go over to coach to help a customer. And seeing that like nobody cared to be over there, I was like, you know what? Let me start manning coach and learning about it, learning about the bags. And let me go that way because you know, that's gonna be, that's gonna be good if I can sell these bags to customers confidently the same way I do with Michael Kors. So I really started to get into it. I really got attached to the brand. I'm still very much so attached to the brand even though I don't work with handbags anymore. But I got very attached to the brand and it came to the point where I started to surpass her in numbers. Like, cause uh, that company was big on numbers too. Like they didn't care about you as a person. They cared about numbers. Like what type of numbers were you producing for the company? And it came for, it came to the point where, not to brag, but like I took coach from literally death's door, like I said earlier, like that's where handbags went to die. Like nobody went over there. I took that particular brand in that particular store from doing nothing to making numbers. Like it was to the point where the higher ups were just like, whoa, like I need to see who's this girl behind this because like, we were literally getting ready to phase this out. Like we were literally getting ready to like push, push this brand out and get like a new brand in here because it wasn't making any money. Like it wasn't doing any business. So I guess when she saw that I was like literally her competition, she kind of like her attitude toward me shift. And I guess I started to put a lot of pressure on her. They started to make her feel like, less than in comparison where where it really started to get problematic for me was when she started dating a manager now you're not supposed to date a manager contractually this is like common sense i feel like almost every workplace has that type of thing in order where a manager isn't supposed to deal with a subordinate but whatever she tried to keep it on the low but the thing about me is that like i'm not stupid like i keep telling people like I mind my business. Like, that's what I do. I, I prefer to mind my business. I'm not a messy chick. I peeps everything. You want to have ammo on people without them knowing that you have ammo. So for a long time, you know, I was keeping things quiet. And she really wasn't doing that great of a job of trying to hide it anyways, because this girl lived in Queens. She started popping up always in the Bronx. And I'm like, okay, you live in Queens. So why are you in the Bronx? And it'd be odd hours too, like not no daytime shit where it's like, all right, well, maybe she's just running errands, da 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 da, da. Like, no, it'd be like 10 p.m., 11 p.m., you know, grown people outsideness hours. And I'm just like, what? And you know, like how most men, like their apartments and their spaces are very like boring and very like blah. That's kind of like the environment that she was in when she would be taking these snaps. And I'm just like, hmm. magically now when my, my, when our um, department manager, like she had hurt herself on the job or something like that. So she was out forever <laughs> of workers comp and different managers was kind of like picking up her slack to like cover, give, give the department coverage or whatever. 
he happened to be one of them and then i guess he was doing such a good job and he was kind of a kiss up to the store manager he became our manager and girl shit got messy after that because you know i was like competition in her eyes all around like not just work wise but like features too like physical features like physically i was competition to this girl as well and i'm just like well damn ho i'm just i'm just trying to get this position and make this money like i don't uh girl so i guess she she used the power of the p honey to persuade him to tell him all these terrible things about me and kind of like persuade his mind in a very negative way way about me so from jump whenever i met him like he always had some slick shit to say like he tried to keep it as professional as he could but like i could see his bias you know clearly what the hell i'm doing is working because numbers are being made money is being had like i don't understand what are you talking about it's bad like you always know it's bad and the situation is trash when other people are beginning to notice the dynamic that's going on so people would be like, yo, he's always picking on you. Like, he always got something to say about your work. Yet, you know, you know, Coach has been doing numbers. Coach has been doing so good ever since you took it over. Like, I don't understand why he always has something to say. And everybody knew I was, like, going for this position. So it really hurt me when he started to, like, talk about considering other people for it and blah, 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 blah. And then he would always make up excuses for why he thought I shouldn't be a specialist. For like dumb frivolous shit like having a drink on the floor. It's like, okay, sis, we're in retail. I'm talking to customers literally all day long. Like all shift long, I'm talking to customers. My mouth gets dry. Now y'all don't want us to chew gum because you say it's unprofessional. All right, all right. So I'm not chewing gum because you say it's unprofessional. Now you telling me that you don't want me to have a drink on the floor to wet the back of my throat from talking when it get dry from talking to all these customers bugging straight bugged mind you mind you he wasn't saying anything to his girlfriend over there in michael kors he would let her do this girl could commit murder on the floor and he would look the next way and be like oh, i ain't seen it i don't know what you're talking about but every single thing about me he nitpicked he did everything in his power to make my life uncomfortable in that department what really pissed me off like the straw that broke the camel's back child was that day all of them was in like a, what you call it the meeting and i had to drink water like this particular day like i was just parched i was just so thirsty like i couldn't help myself like it didn't matter how much water i drank i was just thirsty child so I was making frequent trips back and forth to the stock room where I kept, to the coach stock room where I kept my water since it was a problem for it to be on the floor. And the manager that was kind of doing rounds to make sure that everything was good and departments was getting recovered and cleaned and whatever. Um, it was actually one of my favorite managers because I, again, I worked in so much departments. I made friends with a lot of managers because of how good of an associate I was. So he was on the floor holding it down and I got a text from him asking me where I was. Now, I thought that was weird because he knows I'm not the type of associate that would disappear or like wander off or do weird shit, like stray away from my department. So he never felt the need to ask me that. So when he did that, it was so out of character. I was like, what? And mind you, every time I went to the back, to the stock room to drink water i would tell this girl i'd be like yo i'm going to the back to drink water because i'm thirsty as hell like i don't know what's going on today i don't know if the heat is too high or it's just too hot outside i don't know what's going on child but i'm thirsty so i'm gonna be back there now she felt the need to like page this 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 manager and try to snitch and be like i disappeared he ended up being in the department like shortly after because i don't know what she said to him that dramatized the situation and i guess he was feeling like oh my god i need to get down there now so he you know i was like yeah i'm i'm here like and i explained to him i'm like i don't know what it is like i've just been really thirsty all day and you know the new manager of this department seems to have a problem with me having drinks on the floor 
and, and, and only me having drinks on the floor. So I keep my drink in the back and I've been going back here, back and forth pretty much all day between customers, um, you know, quenching my thirst. And he was like, okay, because Nikki said that you went missing for a while and she couldn't find you. Child, I must have rolled my eyes so far to funk back in my head because like, I was literally agitated. Like, you know, I'm not a person that easily angers, but I think it was a combination of just dealing with her shit for so long that I literally got to the point where I was over it. So that that was a straw. That was a straw that broke the camel's back, child. Like when he said that, I damn, I wanted to walk up to her and grab her raggedy ass weave and just drag her all through Michael Corey's because I was just like, you're a lying ass bitch and I'm tired of it. So I explained to him and he's like, okay, you know, well, I already know how she is. Cause he already, he already knew, he already peeped game. Like he already knew too. So he's like, you know, I already know how she is. I peep game. Like, just be on your P's and Q's when it comes to her. He's like, matter of fact, would you prefer to take your break now? And I was like, you know what? Yes, I want to take my break now. Because if I don't take my break now, I'm going to strangle that hole. So let me go take my break. He was like, all right, cool. So this was probably one of the stupidest things I've ever done in my professional life. And it's not something I regret. I, I, I rarely regret things. I don't regret it. I just think I could have gone about the situation better. So me being hot headed and just being so pissed off by this whole situation about her pretty much lying, trying to make me seem like I wasn't doing shit all day and I was just playing games on the floor. Um, I normally like whenever I went on my break, I wouldn't go all the way up to the break room because the break room was on the third floor and we only had 20 minutes. So I'm like, I'm not about to spend my time going all the way up there to sit down when I could just sit here in the little secluded area, literally right opposite of Michael Kors you know, handbags and mind my business here in a, in a nice little corner. Like, you know, so I went in the corner, still had these people name tag on. Okay. Still had these people name tag on, was on the floor, amounts their products, got me on Snapchat because she, and you know what's funny? She deleted me off of Snapchat when she realized I was putting two and two together about who she was dating in the store. So she deleted me but she kept her little friend as an op to like watch my my snaps or whatever so i knew either way the message was gonna get back to her and that's why i did what i did so i went there and i literally just released all of my rage into that snap and i was talking mad shit like i was talking so much shit y'all it's not even funny i was like you know bitches like to play games like i don't know who they're fucking up in here like i don't i can't like i can't like i won't get niggas fired like bitches is playing so whatever then you know it just really angered me again that like like coming off of break like it just reminded me like i just got like that flashback of like him texting me and being like, where are you? And it got me mad. So I literally wanted to hit her. Like, I'm not even playing. Like, I'm not even a violent person, bro. Like, I'm not a violent person, dog. But you know, like, she really got on my last nerve. Like, she really got, she really got to me. So as much as I wanted to hit her, I didn't, I hadn't secured another job yet. So I was just like, I can't knock this bitch the fuck out in Michael Kors cold-blooded like I can't do that because I don't have another job and that's definitely grounds for termination like we can't do that we can't play them type of games pimping we got bills to pay get you another job first so I guess as an intimidation tactic I walked really close to her and I walked really fast and I was like bitches like to snitch and we'll get fucked up like I said some shit like that like uh, uh, guys <laughs> it was really violent okay I don't I don't remember it's been years uh, I've since become a better woman <laughs> but girl I said some crazy goon shit and it had sis shook when I tell you sis was shook sis was shook because the steps she took after that was crazy like when I tell you sis was scarce around the department she was scarce and I'm like how are you scarce and this is your this is your area like you're Michael Kors's bitch right now like 
how are you scarce? Like, I don't understand. Like, this is your area. So, I was in coach, minding my business, cooling off, blowing off steam or whatever. The snap remained on Snapchat because, you know, Snapchat, every snap dies in 24 hours. So, bright and early next day, bitch, when I comes in for my shift, his little pussy ass gonna come up to me. Him, His pussy ass, by the way, is um, reference to the bitch ass manager that she was fucking. So, his pussy ass bitch ass comes up to me and was like, Okay, so, um, you know, they want to talk to you in HR. And I'm like, okay. I went in there with an open mind, and honey, all of that quickly changed when I walked in that mofo door, and she closed the door, and she was like, oh, you can have a seat. And I was like, okay. And child, she wasted no time. She just jumped right into it. She was like, so, do you have any problems with anyone in the store? Like, anyone. And I'm like, uh, no, I come to work and I'm on my business. Um, do what I'm supposed to do and clock out and go home. And she was like, are you sure? I was like, mm. and all the while she's asking me this, I'm like racking my brain. Like, bitch, what did you do? Like so far, so oblivious to the fucking snaps. So I'm like, girl, why is she asking me something not right? So then when she realized she wasn't getting the information that she wanted out of me that way, she brings up Nikki and I'm like, here we fucking go. This bitch had something to do with this. I already know this bitch is, this has this bitch name all over it, child. So she brings up Nikki and she's like, so you don't have a problem with Nikki. And I'm like, no, Nikki has a problem with me. <laughs> I'm like, no, no, ma'am. Nikki has a problem with me. I'm like, I comes to work like I like I told you previously. I come to work, punch in, do my job, punch out, go home. Like, Nikki has a problem with me. What that problem is, I'm not too sure. You could ask her. But um, as far as I know, I don't have a problem with her. She has a problem with me. So then, honey, she brings the snaps to the forefront. And it was the most awkwardest thing ever to hear all of my colorful language being read back to me verbatim. Cause she had her little, her little pussy ass had her friend that she left to follow me on Snapchat as the ops or whatever. She probably like had that friend, like met up with that friend outside of work, had her that friend played my snaps and like filmed the snap on the friend's phone to show to HR because you know Snapchat snitches. Snapchat will let a bitch know when you screenshot something, when you try to do any foo foo shit. Snapchat will let you know like this motherfucker right here tried to do some shit with your snap. So she had to have done that. Thinking about it, because back then like it was really puzzling me like how how they got a hold of the snap because I'm like well I don't have her on my Snapchat anymore. So the fact that they're saying that you know she you know like you know how do they get a hold of it but coming like I think I literally just had this epiphany right here at this moment like I think that was what went down like she met up with said friend outside of work because they were really like friends like they were really like besties outside of work so she probably met up with this hoe had this hoe play the snap and then she like filmed it so she can show it to HR so, honey, they made a whole transcript out of my snap and was reading that shit back to me. Colorful language included. Like, she didn't even blur out the, the, the language that I use. You know, I felt like, you know, for such a professional uh, meeting, you know, that wouldn't have happened. You know? But her whole grounds was... You know, the reason why we're really having this conversation with you is because you were on the floor when you made these snaps and, you know, you were amongst our products, our customers, and um, you were wearing our name tag. So I was like, well, I was on break. And, you know, when you're on break, there was there's no way to prove that, I guess, like, because that's like your paid break, like your 15 minutes or whatever. So there's no real way to prove that you just weren't bullshitting and making that video and you were actually 
on your break. So it came to the point where they had to be like, okay, so we're gonna like go through this investigation. Girl, shit got serious real quick. And like, I have never been so scared in my life. I was just like, what the fuck? Like my poker face is a one top of the line. So she's sitting there telling me all this serious shit and I'm just nonchalant as fuck like appearing nonchalant as fuck as I'm like internally melting like I'm internally having a meltdown and I'm just like showing this nonchalant ass face you know like okay well y'all do what y'all need to do I just explained to you what happened um you can do what you need to do so you know when I came back down from HR like everyone was so concerned like all my like because like I said y'all I knew it like I knew I, I knew everybody so everybody was kind of like camped around like, yo, what's up? Like, why'd they take you to HR? Like, what's going on? So I pretty much just explained to like everyone that was asking me like the situation and that I think, you know, Nikki tried to set me up to get me fired. And everybody was like, oh my God, that's, some that's such something she would do because she's gotten other people fired that way. I was like, hold up. So nobody thought to tell me I was dealing with not only a rat, but like a dangerous ass snake too like nobody thought to say something to sis like this is dangerous like what are y'all doing so when i told like the older ladies like the 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 work moms i would call them when i told them you know them them been with the company for 20 something odd years like you know they've seen many people come and go you know and explain like the severity of the situation and they're like yeah like that's grounds for termination like i've seen people get terminated for much less like you really got yourself in a pickle i think that's when fear really started to set in with me because i was just like oh shit like i may have literally handed her the ammo to get rid of me as she's been trying to for all this time because she feels threatened and intimidated by me oh shit girl oh shit so this whole time nikki's coming to work she's like avoiding me as a motherfucker because she knows i wanted to snatch her up bitch she knows so she's avoiding me like a motherfucker her little bitch ass boyfriend is putting me to the back of the department literally y'all he made me clearance his bitch for like weeks on end weeks on end i was always scheduled to work in clearance I was just like, wow, he's really going hard to protect this little pencil headed bitch. Like, wow, that's crazy. Mind you, all of this is, is going under the investigation is while the investigation is going on. So I thought no better time than to write his ass up. I'm like, cause now y'all gonna be investigating two things. You're gonna be investigating me. Cause you know, they have security watching me all day child every single move i made they had security on that ass they had security on my ass making sure that like you know i was not violent da, 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 da. i tried to appear as pleasant as i could to this bitch okay as pleasant as i could because i knew security was watching me so i think this investigation probably lasted a week child or less and they concluded that you know as big as a fuck up that i did commit i was literally like a fly on the wall for all the years i've been there like they never they never knew anything negative to be associated with my name like if they did hear me or if my name was exchanged in like higher up meetings it was always for good things so i guess that that granted me mercy child because that was like pretty much the result of the situation like when the investigation was over and i had to go back up to hr they were just like okay well you know normally and they stressed that shit okay they were like normally the offenses that you committed is like immediate grounds for termination like we have terminated many people for doing what you've done but you are an amazing associate um and in your time here this is literally the first time that we've ever had any run-ins with you. So, for future reference, they're just pretty much like, girl, for future reference, whatever issue you got, keep that shit outside the workplace. Don't be, don't be amongst my products talking foul. Don't be wearing my name tag whilst you talking foul, bitch. Just watch your mouth, watch your surroundings when you want to get into a rage, all right?
have a nice day. That was pretty much the ending of that. And I was just like, oh. The long and the short of the story is that as far as I know, as far as I've recently heard, Nikki's still with said company. Nikki is still being treated as a slave for said company. Her and that man that she was messing with to get leverage aren't together anymore. Like, she, she used him for what she could have to, like, I guess, sleep her way to the top. And she's not even at the top. You know what I'm saying? Like, she's not a manager. She's not at the top. Like, she's not doing anything. So, at the end of the day, it's like, all right, you're still working for this company making coins. Making, like, yeah, coins. And it's literally, like, pocket change. You're not a manager, so what were you really doing? Like, you, you don't sleep with a manager to become a different associate. <laughs> An associate of a different place. Like, you sleep with them to increase your your status, if you will. So, you failed there. Three, you have no education. Like, you literally dropped out of school to become a slave to this company that sees you as disposable trash. So... I win. <laughs> Girl, I still win in the end. Like, you still look stupid. Like, you still right where I left you. Like, I have leveled up in so many different ways, especially professionally, and you're still where I left you. Like, I can come back at any given time and give you hell because I feel like it. <laughs> that's what makes it so funny it's like did you really win in the end though like you did all of this jump through all these hoops to try to get rid of me and really i still ended up departing when i wanted to i fucking put in my two weeks and quit it when i wanted to bitch you tried you tried and you lost you tried and you lost and you will always lose when you're dealing with a bitch like me because bitch bitch <laughs> you know if you if you find yourself in a situation with people like that just understand that they're more miserable literally they're so miserable that doing things like this is the only way they get any type of joy in their life and you should feel bad for them because i always felt bad for her as much as she pushed my buttons on certain days i always felt bad for her because i was like damn imagine being that miserable in my life that I have to come to work and try to make other people's lives miserable. Imagine being that unhappy in my own skin. Damn, like I know why you're doing this. Like you're doing this because you're miserable. <laughs> you're doing this because you don't know better. This is your way of having some sort of happiness in the most sadistic, twisted way ever. Like this is your way of, 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 of finding happiness and I feel bad for you. So yeah. That was a very long, elongated, elongated story about the time a hoe tried to get me fired. If you're still here and you're still watching, Sam, I love you and you're amazing. <laughs> because child, this video long as hell. Girl. I will see you guys in my next one. Until then, stay blessed. Mwah.